Good morning, everybody. This is Sean Copeland. Today is Saturday, February the 17th, and welcome to another brand new, life-changing edition of the 94X Kingdom Driven CEO. So today I come to you from beautiful Branson, Missouri. Angela and I are here at the Chateau on the Lake, right on a Table Rock Lake, uh, celebrating Valentine's Day. We get a little three-day weekend going on. She is sleeping, and I am podcasting with you. So thank you so much for uh, being with us. I'm really, really excited to share with you uh, today's message on the word Avada. And we'll get to that in just a moment. And what you're going to see is Avada is all about integrating all areas of our life together, bringing worship, work, and faith all together. And that is what 94X does. We call this the 94X Kingdom Driven CEO because 94X is our faith at work movement. It is going wild. I have received uh, speaking requests from all over the country in the last week. Uh, It is going to be a little challenging to manage from a time perspective, but I'm so excited about what what the Lord is doing with this. And if you want to check it out, you can go to... 94xmovement.com and we have online community roundtables and we will soon have a certification program and a curriculum for businesses who want to bring their faith into their business. So today we are going to talk about the word Avada and I want you to think about this. Eskimos have over 100 distinct words for our word snow. Now, why is that? Because language has a unique ability to create distinctions between things in our mind. But language can also bring two ideas together. The ancient Hebrews had a deep understanding of how faith and work came together in their lives. It shouldn't be surprising that they used the same word for work, worship, and service. This word is called avada, A-V-O-D-A-H, and jointly it means these three words all in one. The various uses of this Hebrew word can be found first in Genesis 2.15. It tells us that God's original design and desire is that our work and our worship would be a seamless way of living. In some verses, the word avada means work, as in to work in the field and to do common labor. Moses, renewing the covenant with God, says in Exodus 34, 21, six days you shall work, and the word work is avada. And then Psalm 104, 23 says, then man goes out to his work, which is also avada, to his labor until evening. In other, wor- in other verses, avada means worship, as in to worship you, O God. Exodus 8.1 says, This is what the Lord says, Let my people go so that they may worship, which is also the word avada, me. And Joshua 24.15 says, But as for me and my house, we will serve, which also is the word avada, the Lord. As for me, Joshua says, I will Avada. I will work for and worship and serve the Lord. This is a powerful image to think that the word for working in the fields is the same word used for worshiping the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Avada is a picture of an integrated faith, a life where work and worship and service come from the same root, from the same foundation. 1 Corinthians 3.11 says, For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. So often we think of worship as something we do on Sunday and work as something we do on Monday, but this dichotomy is neither what God designed nor what he desires for our lives. Avada, on the other hand, suggests that our work can be a form of worship where we honor the Lord God and serve our neighbors. Each of us spends a significant portion of our lives engaged in various forms of labor. 
whether in the workplace, at home, or within our communities. And it's within these areas of work that our faith can profoundly shape our attitudes, actions, and outcomes. Let's begin by looking at the fundamental principles that underpin the integration of faith and work. In Colossians 3, 23, and 24, we are reminded, Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. This verse encapsulates the essence of our approach to work, not you know, to labor not just for earthly recognition or material gain, but as an expression of our devotion to God. As we navigate the complexities of the professional landscape, it's crucial to anchor ourselves in the timeless wisdom imparted by Scripture. Proverbs 16.3 urges us to commit to the Lord whatever you do, and He will establish your plans. This verse underscores the importance of seeking divine guidance and instructing our endeavors to God's providence. When we align our aspirations with God's will, we embark on a journey marked by purpose, fulfillment, and spiritual abundance. Furthermore, our faith serves as a beacon of light amidst the challenges and uncertainties we encounter in our jobs. In Joshua 1.9, we are reassured, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Armed with this unwavering assurance, we can confront adversity with resilience and perseverance, knowing that God walks alongside us every step of the way. Integrating our faith into our work transcends mere adherence to religious rituals or observances. It entails infusing every aspect of our professional lives with the values and virtues espoused by our beliefs. As Martin Luther King Jr. eloquently articulated, if a man is called to be a street sweeper, he should sweep streets even as Michelangelo painted or Beethoven composed music, or Shakespeare wrote poetry. He should sweep streets so well that all of the hosts of heaven and earth will pause to say, here lived a great street sweeper who did his job well. So how do we integrate our faith into our work? I just want to give you five quick examples of things that I have done or seen at companies, and there are hundreds of these, okay? There are, you can't imagine how many examples uh, there are of different ways to integrate your faith into your work, but here are five of the most common uh, that I have seen. Number one, just offer prayer for those who are hurting. So whether it's your clients or your employees, almost everybody is going through something challenging. And if you're a good listener, and ask good questions, that will come up during your conversation and just taking a moment to say, can I pray with you? If you're a listener of ours, you remember this from a couple of weeks ago that I think these are the most powerful words in the English language. Can I pray with you can change everything. Or, or if you're not comfortable praying in person with them, just ask, uh, just say, I will be praying for you. Or is it okay if I uh, pray for you? That type of thing. That alone can begin to bring your faith into the rest of your life, into your workplace. Number two, you can start a small voluntary Bible study. I've seen this a lot. When people want to bring in their faith, but they're nervous, all you need to do is find a few friends who uh, you invite into a Bible study over lunch or maybe right before work starts, whatever works best for you. And there are a lot of ways to do this. One, uh, you can call into our daily devotional. So we have a daily devotional every day from 817 to 830 Central Standard Time. The number is 888-630-4807. All you have to do is call in. We mute the phone. You just listen in. We're off by 8.30 every day. So if you would like, just invite your friends in and listen to that. We utilize the devotional Jesus Calling, and we just talk about how to have more trust and thanksgiving in our daily lives. You can also uh, read a proverb 
uh, per day or week. It depends on if you want to do this daily or weekly. Uh, just read a proverb and talk about it. You can do your own devotional. You know, just find a devotional like uh, Jesus Calling. There are many, many good ones out there, and you can read out of that. Just something not too long, you know, 15 to 30 minutes maximum. Bring in your friends and just talk about, you know, how to draw closer to Jesus Christ. Number three, you can develop a faith-based book club. Now, this has been really popular. You just ask the people within your company if they would like to read a book together, a faith-based book together uh, each month, and then the same time every month, you talk about it, what you learned, what you're going to uh, integrate into your lives. We do this at our bank, and we have lunch. I believe it's on the third or fourth uh Monday uh, of every month, and then we'll start the new book up for the next month, and we read it, and then we get together and have lunch and talk about it. It's really, really fun, and uh, so that's another way. Uh, A fourth way is to develop a prayer team. Now, this is going to sound pretty radical, but it is pretty amazing. So I felt called to do this at our uh, bank. And so I came in uh, that morning and just emailed out everybody and said, Hey, guys, you know, I'm feeling kind of led that we should be a praying organization. Would anybody out there like to join me? on a prayer team where we'll just pray for others and people will can send us their prayer requests. Well, we have about 50 or 60 people on this prayer team. We have hundreds of prayer requests. We had 157 prayers answered in 2023. It is truly remarkable. And what we did was we just built an email that people could email their prayer request to. It automatically got distributed out to all members of the prayer team. We pray immediately, and then we pray together on Wednesday mornings. And then the leader of our prayer team, Pam Mann, has been tracking the results of those prayers, totally on her own, by the way. And uh, it is really drastic to see what God is doing. And then you can also send out a daily scripture to those who like it. And I just go in and have, have pulled a lot of scriptures about, you know, encouraging or how to deal with difficult times or how to deal with fear, you know. And so I have tons and tons of scriptures that uh, I just keep in a list and and I send them out to my family and to certain uh, friends uh, every single morning. It takes about one minute and uh, they've all talked about what what an amazing impact it has been. So here's what we know. Nothing that we do, none of these tasks is insignificant in the eyes of God. Whether we occupy positions of prominence or we carry out more humble duties, our commitment to excellence and service bears witness to the transformative power of faith in action. Moreover, our conduct in the workplace serves as a testament to the love, integrity, and passion that characterizes followers of Christ. Let's embrace the call to integrate our faith into our work with unwavering zeal and steadfast conviction. Let's draw inspiration from the words of Colossians 3.17, which implores us, and whatever we do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. As we embark on this journey of avada, of faith-infused worship, work, and service, May we illuminate the world with the radiance of God's love and of God's grace. So thank you so much for being here with us today. Please let me close us out in prayer, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend and week. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this message. I pray a blessing on every caller, every family, every business that is represented here, everybody that calls in to this Uh, podcast because they are seeking you, Father. I pray that you would help us all to live Avada, to integrate everything together so that you are in every area of our lives, not just on Sunday mornings. We love you so much, and please help us to be a light unto our world. In Jesus' name, amen. And thank you so much for joining the 94X Kingdom Driven CEO.